Hello! In this presentation, we're going to complete the second half of the comprehensive problem. Last time, we completed the first half by entering the journal entries over here in the general journal, posting those to the general ledger on the side. That then used to create the trial balance. Trial balance, imbalance here as we can see by the green zero, meaning the debits minus the credits equal zero and net income is at 5,900 representing the 7,100 credit minus the debits. This is an income and not a loss. We then have the activity down here. We have completed the left side of the activities from 5.3 down to 5.20. We will now be completing this side, 521 down to 531. You'll recall last time that we both froze the screen here and we had hidden some cells. Note that we have A, B, C, D, and then it goes to J on the worksheet. First, we're going to need to unhide these cells and I'm going to unfreeze the frame. And then we're going to rehide some cells and refreeze the frame. So that's going to be some, some just setup work we're going to have to figure out here. So first, in order to unfreeze the frame, I'm going to go to the Home tab. We're going to go to the View tab. And then we're going to scroll down to the... Uh, we're not going to scroll down, but we're going to go to the Windows group. And then we're going to go to the uh, Freeze Panes. And we want to unfreeze the pane. So we have that. Then I need to unhide these uh, rows here. So I'm going to put my cursor right on that D so we hear that we see that arrow. Hold down the left click. I'm going to drag from D to uh, as far over as we need to go. Let's go D to J. And then we're going to right click on that selected area and unhide. Now we can see this data on this side. And what we want to do is hide then these cells on this side. So we want to hide cells uh, A through E so that we can just see this data and our information over here. Now note that as we do that, that means that these our these entries will be posted and have been posted to the general ledger and they're going to be hidden. So we're not going to be able to see those and go back to those. So we want to make sure that these are all correct before we do this because <laughs> otherwise we're going to have to unhide in order to go back. So we know that we are zero here means that the debits equal the credit. So we look good. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this. I'm going to put my cursor right on the A, scroll over to the E. I want the entire uh, rows to be highlighted. Then right click on the highlighted rows and we want to hide those cells. All right, so now we have our information. We're gonna be working with this information over here. So this is what we are looking at. And we will use that to enter our data. So I'm gonna scroll back up and we're gonna enter the data into this this area. This is the general journal where we're gonna we're gonna journalize the journal entries into this general journal. And then we're gonna continue posting those to the general ledger accounts. Note that the general ledger accounts do have information in them already because we have started this problem and worked half of it already. And then we're gonna use that. That will be used then to automatically create the trial balance so that we can then see if we are in balance as we go. Next transaction, we're on 521, says recorded services provided but for which cash had not been received. So we're going to scroll back up here. We're on F5, 521. We got services done, cash not received. Therefore, first question, is cash affected? We're going to say no, we did work and had not yet received the cash. What did we get then? We got an IOU, an accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is an asset account. It's got a debit balance. We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it as its normal balance, another debit. So I'm gonna copy accounts receivable. We're gonna put that on top in B5, right click, paste, one, two, three. The amount then is going to be, and scroll back, $8,000. Scrolling back up, H5, $8,000. We're gonna credit something for 8,000. I'm gonna do that with a formula, negative of that number. Then we just need to know the account. Why are people going to pay us 8,000 in the future? Because we did work and earned revenue. Other account, revenue. So we're going to go down here to K17, right click, copy that revenue. I'm going to put that in G6, right click, paste, one, two, three. Double click before the R, 
and indent spacebar three times. All right, we're gonna post that now. In order to post it, I'm gonna try to freeze the frames once again. So I'm gonna scroll down just a bit so I, I'm on, so I can see the uh, E. Uh, I can I can see just the rows four and uh, and F here. And then once I'm right there, I want to freeze the frame right here. So I'm gonna put my cursor right there, and by doing that, it'll tell the computer once I select freeze frame that I want to keep these frames open. Now, if you do that and you're up here then uh, you'll keep these these uh, cells as well but i don't really need to see these cells up here so i'm going to scroll down and i just want to have the screen look just like this and then go to the view tab and then in the windows group we're going to go to freeze panes and then go ahead and freeze panes what that will do then is when we scroll over here we'll have as optimal as possible to be able to see the screen and these cells over here will remain so that we can use them in order to create the journal entries. So I'm gonna scroll back over here. Now we're gonna post the accounts receivable. That's the second account on the trial balance and therefore the second account on the GL. So here it is. We're on the debit side over here. Therefore we will be on the debit side here. We're gonna skip a line. We are in cell R10. So R10 equals, we're gonna to point to this 8,000. Once we select enter, then this is going to increase by 8,000. So 8,000 plus the 3,000 is 8,300. 8,000 plus 300, I should say, is 8,300. So here's the 8,300 pulls over here. We are now out of balance by 8,000. Next, we need to record the revenue or income account, which is all the way down here. We got, we got assets, liabilities, equity, and then revenue way down here. So it's going to be in the same order on the general ledger where we have cash and then we've got the liabilities then we've got the equity and revenue revenue is going to be down here i'm going to make it a bit smaller so that we can see a little bit more we're going to say down to 120. so here's the revenue we're posting it down here in the credit side of the revenue account in cell ae20 going to do it with a formula by saying equals and then point to this 8,000. When we select enter, it's gonna increase the revenue here to 15,100. That same amount then will be pulled over to the trial balance. So if we scroll back over to the trial balance, we see the 15,100 here. Net income then is going to increase. Note that it went up to 15,100 minus the 800 minus the 400 gives us 13,900 in net income. We are now in balance, meaning the debits minus the credits are zero. Therefore, the debits equal the credits. Next transaction, we're on 525 says, cash received from clients for revenue earned during this month. So I'm gonna say 525 is our next transaction, 525. And first question, is cash received? We're gonna say yes, it says we received cash. So cash has a debit balance. We need to make it go up, therefore we're gonna do the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So I'm gonna copy the cash. We're gonna put that on top in cell G8, right click and paste one, two, three. Scrolling back down, we can find the amount, 4,200. The amount will be 4,200. Scrolling back up. 4,200. We know that we are going to credit something for 4,200, negative of that number. Then we just need to know what this other account will be. So if we scroll back down, received uh, cash received from clients for revenue earned during the month. So what we are saying is we got this cash and we earned revenue in essence at the same time. So we're going to then record the other side as we earned it to revenue earning it being the time period in which we record revenue under the revenue recognition principle. We're gonna copy revenue, right click and copy. We're gonna put that in cell G9 by right clicking and pasting one, two, three. Then double click before the R and space three times and we'll indent that, there's our journal entry. Now we're gonna post this out. So here's our cash here. It's gonna be the first account on the trial balance therefore the first account in the gl as well we're going to find the new row and that will be in in 15 then we're going to use a formula to post it that formula is equals 
and then point to that 4,200, that will then bring this balance up by 4,200 to 38,800, that amount being posted to the trial balance here and putting us out of balance there. Then we're going to record the second side to revenue. So we're looking for the revenue account. So we're gonna scroll back over, scrolling back over, scrolling down to revenue. So here is our revenue account. We're looking for this transaction to be posted to the credit side of the revenue account in cell AE21. That will then equal pointing to this 4,200. That will bring this balance up. Note that in the revenue account, we only have credits. That's all that happens to revenue. So it's up to 19,300. That same 19,300 then will be posted to the trial balance here. We are in balance and we have net income of 19,300 minus the 800 minus the 400, bringing us to a net income of 18,100. Remember that that is income representing credits over the debits of 18,100 credits of revenue, debits of expenses. Back. Next, we have cash received from client for revenue earned in prior month and recorded in accounts receivable. So that's gonna be on 527. So we got 527 here. First question, is cash received? We're gonna say yes, it said cash was received. Cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which is another debit. So I'm going to copy the cash. We're going to put that on top in cell G11. Uh, right click and paste 123. Then we're going to look for that amount for 527 being 1200. Scrolling back over, we are in cell H11, 1200. We're going to have a credit for 1200 then we just need to know what account this should be and remember that we got the cash this time but have not yet earned it or we earned it last month now we're recording the fact that uh, we're receiving cash for an amount earned in the prior month and when it was earned it was also recorded in receivable representing the fact that people owe us money we have receivable then being the balance we need so i'm going to copy the receivable putting that here in G12, right click and paste one, two, three. We're gonna then double click before the A, space three times and enter. Now what we need to do is post this out. Now note that we already knew that we we're gonna credit the receivable because we debited cash. But if we think through it, we're gonna say, our accounts receivable is a debit balance account. It represents people owing us money. If people have now paid us the money, they don't owe us as much money. And therefore this amount needs to go down the way we make it go down is by doing the opposite thing to it as its normal balance which in this case is a credit all right so now we're going to post this we've got the cash here it's going to be the first account on the trial balance therefore the first account on the gl we want to be on the debit side new line we're in cell n16 so n16 equals then pointing to that 1200 that's going to increase this debit amount by 1,200 to 40,000. That amount also being on the trial balance here. Then we're going to post the receivable second account, second account on the trial balance of therefore second account on the GL. We want to be on the credit side. Therefore, we will be here in cell S11 equals and then point to that 1,200. That's going to bring this debit balance down in the credit direction. Debit's still winning by 7,100. That number will also be reflected on the trial balance. That will put us back in balance. No effect on net income from this transaction. Next transaction. We've got 528 paid employee for salaries incurred. So we're going to say 528 over here. I'm in cell uh, F14, 528 and paid salaries. So we're going to say, is cash affected? Yes, it is. We paid salaries. Therefore, cash is a debit balance. We need to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So I'm going to copy cash. We're going to put that on the bottom. So here's the date. We want to be on the bottom of that. Right click and paste one, two, three. Amount then will be 
this 8,000, so, or, sorry, 800, 800. So we're gonna start with the credit to cash of 800. If we credit something, we also then too need to debit something for that same 800. The question then being, what do we debit? And we can see here that uh, if we look through this, we've got the salaries expense. We're gonna debit the salaries expense. All expenses have debit balances. We already knew that we're gonna debit this because we credited cash. So I'm gonna copy this and put that on the debit side in G14, right click, paste, one, two, three. Then I'm gonna double click in front of the C. We're gonna double click and indent that three times on the space bar. Now we already knew that we were gonna debit the expense because we credited cash and therefore had to debit the expense. But if we double check it in our mind to get a better sense of what this account is doing, we know that expenses have debit balances. We know that it's going up in the debit direction because expenses always go up. Therefore we do the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So we can double check ourselves in that way. We're then gonna post this out. Notice that this is way down here. It's gonna be the assets, liabilities, equity, income, and then the expenses. Same order on the GL. So when we post this, we're gonna scroll over. We got the assets, we got the liabilities, we got the equity, we got the revenue. We're looking for salaries expense, which is here. We wanna be in the debit side, next cell, next row, which is AH10. So within AH10, we're gonna say that equals point to this 800 and it's going to equal h14 which will bring this 800 dollar balance up to 1600 that same 1600 then will also be reported on the trial balance over here here's the 1600 that puts us out of balance by 800 until we record the cash it brings net income down by 19.3 minus the 16 minus the 4 then we're gonna record the cash that's gonna be on the first account on the trial balance and therefore the first account on the general ledger. We are on the credit side and therefore we are in cell 017. That equals pointing to the cash of 800 and enter. That brings the 40,000 down to 39.2 down by 800. That 39.2 also being reported on the trial balance and putting us back in balance. Next transaction, we've got 530 paid cash for miscellaneous expense. So we're gonna go back over here, 530, we'll say 530. First question, is cash affected? We're gonna say yes, we paid cash. Cash has a debit balance, we need to make it go down and therefore we're doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So we'll copy the cash, copy cash, Gonna put it on the bottom, credits going on the bottom. Here's our date, here's the bottom of the date. Right click and paste, one, two, three. Then we're gonna double click in front of the C, indent three times. And the amount then will be, over here, 530, 280. So we're looking at that 200, or 250, 250. So we'll scroll back up, negative 250, credit side. We're gonna debit something in H17 then for 250. And all it gave us was miscellaneous expense. So this is some type of expense that we don't typically have a category for, and therefore putting it into miscellaneous, always or oftentimes being the bottom account on a trial balance. So I'm gonna copy that. We're going to put that on top, miscellaneous expense in G17, right click, paste, one, two, three. There we have that. We already know that we're going to debit it because we credited cash, but if we double check it, we can say that expenses always have debit balances. They only go up in the debit direction, and therefore we're going to debit this account in order to increase it. And to record this, note that the miscellaneous expense is on the very, very bottom and therefore we're gonna have to go all the way to the end here. So we're on the general ledger, it goes assets and then liabilities, then equity, then income, then expenses. And we're way over here on the end in AL22. Uh, so we're in miscellaneous expenses on the debit side in cell AL22. That will then equal this 250, so it equals H17 bringing the $400 balance up by 250 to 650. That same 650 will be found on the trial balance here, 650. 
puts us out of balance by the 250 until we record the second half. And net income is 19,300 credits minus the debits, giving us 17,050. Next thing that happens, cash is going down with a credit. Cash is the first account on the trial balance and therefore first account on the general ledger. We're looking to be at the credit side of it. So we're going to scroll down to 018. 018 will then equal this credit of 250. Once we select enter, it'll bring that 39,200 down by 250 to 38,950. That amount then being the amount recorded on the trial balance, and we are now back in balance. Next transaction, we're going to scroll back down here. We have another miscellaneous on 531, paid miscellaneous for 300. So scrolling back over, we have 531 in uh, F20, 531, and we're going to say that cash is affected. It's going down cash has a debit balance we're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it which in this case is a credit copying cash putting it on the bottom here's the date we're going to put it on the bottom here right click and paste one two three amount then in i21 we're going to scroll back over in i21 we want 300 dollars in i21 scrolling back up we're going to put negative 300 then we're going to debit something for 300 and once again it went to miscellaneous we don't know what exactly we you know we, we know what we pay for most likely but we don't have an account for it because it's not important enough or material enough to break out into its own account so we're putting it into miscellaneous account right click copy we're going to put that on top once again in g20 right click paste one two three then double clicking before this C, I'm going to indent this a bit, double click and space three times. Now we're going to go ahead and post this out. Now remember, we know that the miscellaneous was debited because we credited cash, but we also know that it's an expense and all expenses are always debited. They always have a debit balance. They only go up and therefore they go up with a debit by doing the same thing to it. Now this expense, of course, is going to be way over there once again. It's the last account on the trial balance, therefore last account on the general ledger. Assets, and then liabilities, then equity, then income, then expenses. Miscellaneous expense way down here. The last one, we are in row AL and 23 on the debit side of the miscellaneous expenses. In that cell, we're going to say that equals, and then point to this 300 in H20. 300 in H20 is going to bring this 650 balance up by 300 to 950. If we scroll back over, that 950 will be here. Put us out of balance by the 300 until we record the second part. And net income then went down 19,300 minus the 1,600 minus the 950. Now we're going to record the cash side of this cash up here first account on the trial balance first account on the general ledger next area within the general ledger on the credit side in cell 019 so 019 will then equal and we're going to point to that 300 so we've got 38,950 minus the 300 brings us down to 38,650 and that puts us back in balance over here on the trial balance next transaction we've got 531 cash from clients for work done in this month 531 so we're going to say 531 is cash affected we're going to say yes it says cash was received from clients is that correct cash from clients yes so we're going to say cash is a debit balance we're going to make it to go up by doing the same thing to it which in this case is another debit so we'll copy the cash, we'll put that on top in cell G23, right click and paste 123. Then we're going to put the dollar amount, which will be in this case $3,000. Scrolling back over, scrolling back up, debit $3,000 to cash. We're going to credit something. Now we just need to know what that credit will be. In this case, we earned the revenue at the same time we got the cash, and therefore, we're going to record revenue at the point in time we earned it, this point in time. So we're going to copy revenue, 
Put that on the bottom of our journal entry in cell G24, right clicking and pasting 123. Double click before the R to indent, spacebar three times. Now we already know that we're going to credit revenue because we debited cash, but if we think through it, revenue is an income statement account. Income statement accounts only go up. Revenue is a normal credit balance and therefore only goes up in the credit direction, which is why we are crediting it, crediting it here. Let's post this out. Cash first. First account on the trial balance, therefore first account on the general ledger. Next row that is ready and open is uh, row 20. We're on the debit side, so column N20 is going to equal this 3000. Once we select enter, it's going to bring this balance up by 3000 to 41650. That number then is also reported on the trial balance. We are now out of balance by 3000 until we report the other side. We've got the revenue account. That's going to be down here on the trial balance. It's going to be assets, liabilities, equity, and then revenue. So we will then scroll over to the revenue on the general ledger, which also is in terms of assets and then liabilities, then revenue. So we are over here in AE and 22. So we are in the revenue account credit side. Next available row being row 22 is going to equal and then point to this 3000. So we've got the 19,300 plus the 3000 balance at 22,300. Notice we only have credits in the revenue. It only goes up in the credit direction. That same 22,300 will be represented on the trial balance. Now we need to record, uh, oh, that's it, that's the whole thing. <laughs> Next transaction. We're gonna scroll back to, oh, note that uh, net income, of course, went up by this. So net income is the 22.3 minus the 1600 minus the 950. Therefore, we are at net income, not loss, of 19,750. Next transaction. Service provided on account. Cash has not yet been received. 530. We're going to say, is cash affected? And we're going to say, no, we did work and have not yet received cash. What then did we get? We got an IOU. That represented by accounts receivable. So accounts receivable is a debit balance account. It's going up, people owing us more money. Therefore, we're gonna do the same thing to it as its normal balance, another debit. So we'll copy K6, the accounts receivable, scroll down, that's gonna be put on top in G20, uh, G26, right click and paste one, two, three. The amount then will be, if we scroll back over, $2,000. So it's gonna be 2,000 in H26, $2,000. We're gonna credit something for $2,000. The credit will then go to the accounts, uh, revenue account. We earned the, the revenue and therefore we'll record revenue at the point in time it is earned. So we'll copy revenue or income, paste that in G27, right click and paste one, two, three. We'll then double click before the R space three times for an indentation note that we already knew that we're going to credit the, re the revenue because we debited the receivable but we also know that revenue is a credit balance account it only goes up in the credit direction and therefore we do the same thing to it as its normal balance which is a credit so we're going to post this out we got accounts receivable here scrolling up that's the second account on the trial balance and therefore second account on the gl we need to be on the debit side of the receivable account. Next row that is open is R12. I'm gonna scroll down just a bit. We might, I'm gonna make this a bit smaller so we can see more of it on one screen. So there we go. We can see this here is where we need to go. That's where this needs to go. So I'm gonna say in R12 equals this 2000. And once we select enter, this balance will go up and put us out of balance over here. This 9,100 is what is now being reported here. I'm gonna bring us back up. I'm gonna go back up to 130% of the screen. Next, we have revenue is 2,000. Revenue is down here on the trial balance. So it's a ways down, assets, liabilities, equity, and then revenue. Same order over here, assets, liabilities, equity, revenue. Here's revenue. 
We're on the credit side, as always, when recording revenue. We are in cell AE23. AE23 equals, pointing to this 2000, that's going to bring this 22,300 balance up in the credit direction by 2000 to 24,300. That number also reported on the trial balance, 24,300. We are now back in balance. We see that net income is revenue minus expenses, credits of 24,300 minus the debits of 1,006 and 950 for 21,950. Next transaction. Owner withdraws $10,000. Last thing, 531. We're going to say, is cash affected? And we're going to say the owner withdrew the money. So it's, it is affected and it's actually going down for the company. It's going up for the owner. It's going down for the company. So cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So I'm going to copy the cash. We're going to put that on the bottom. Here's the date. We want to be on the bottom. Right click and paste one, two, three. Double click in front of the C. Space three times. We're going to have a credit over here in I-30 of 10,000. Negative 10,000. We will then debit something for 10,000. And now who took the money out? The owner did. So that's going to be part of the equity section. Remember, it's an order. It's going to be um, assets, liability, then equity. And typically, we make this other account. It's kind of like a contra equity account called draws. So it's actually going to call draws. If it was a corporation, we'd be talking about dividends, which is a similar concept where the company is paying the owner. So we're going to copy this. We're going to put that on top in cell G29. Right click and paste one, two, three. Now again, we knew that we're going to credit, we're going to debit draws because we credited cash. Draws is an account we don't see uh, too often, so we got to think through that. Know that uh, draws is in the equity section, but it kind of acts like an expense, meaning it's a contra equity account in a way. The equity account representing what is owed to the owner, kind of like a liability, except the liability is owed to a third party. The capital account is what is owed to the owner. The draws is breaking out what has been paid to the owner and therefore it's going to be a debit balance account. It's always going to go up in the debit direction and bring down the total credit balance. So the net of all the equity is going to be decreased when draws go up. Similar to how expenses behave in that they only go up in the debit direction and they decrease the total net credit of all equity accounts. Uh, but the draws, of course, is not part of the net income calculation. So that's going to be that. We're going to post this out. Here's draws. Here's draws on the trial balance. Going to be the same order. Assets, liability, equity on the general ledger. Assets and then liabilities, then equity. So we're over here in draws. I'm going to make this a bit smaller so we can see more of the screen. Back down to 120. Back down to 110. That's close enough, close enough. So we are here in draws. We're on the debit side in AD uh, 14. I'm going to scroll down just a tab. We want to be there. So this draws needs to be in cell AD 14 with a formula. That formula of equals this 10,000 there. When we select enter, this will go up by 10,000. So there we have that. I'm going to increase the size of the screen back up to 130. Scroll back over. There's our draws, out of balance by 10,000. Draws is not affecting net income. Next, we're gonna have cash. It's gonna be a credit of 10,000. Here's cash. Here's cash on the general ledger. We are on the credit side. Next row, here it is in 021. That then will equal this 10,000. So this 41,650 down by the 10,000 credit to 31,650. That amount then reported here on the trial balance, back in balance here on the trial balance. So that's going to be the completed problem. Note that then we're going to use this trial balance. We'll have some adjusting entries at a late, you know, that's what we would do. We would in include some adjusting entries, uh, a later topic, and then make the financial statements from it. Note what we can, we can tell everything we want to know if the financial statements are recorded in this format, in that. I can see what my assets are. I can just highlight this and Excel calculates it at 68,470. 
This might be pretty small, but note that it's just calculating down here. Very useful to have that. Uh, we can see what the liabilities are. I just highlight those. It's at 14420 I can see what net income is. I can just highlight these. Credits minus debits means net income is 21750 I can see what total equity is. I just highlight all the blue accounts. That's 54050 I could double check that number by recalculating it as assets minus liabilities. So remember that number, 54050 Also calculated as assets minus liabilities. 54050 so note that if we have the trial balance formatted in this way really pretty efficient for us to get all the information we we need from it due to the debit and credit format and the use of formulas uh the, the financial statements are actually a bit more bulky and, and a bit di more difficult to deal with but we can't present this to anybody else therefore that's the reason that we would convert this information to financial statements